Hey kids, flexing teacher Weber here. I hope you're having a good day. Um, yesterday we had looked at a re review of ratios and how to write ratios in lowest terms, what they are, um, that sort of thing. Um, today we started looking at equivalent ratios. The goal here is to eventually move to using ratios to solve problems. Now, um, ratios are used to make comparisons, as we've already seen, you know, comparing uh, the activities that kids enjoy, like comparing who likes screen time compared to who wants sports, to who wants artistic activities, things like that. Uh, but ratios can also help us make predictions as well. So the other day in class, we did a poll and the previous video, I did a poll with the kids where um, I asked them what activity they would prefer to do. And what I want to do in this, the beginning of this video is I want to use the results from uh, that poll to estimate the ratio of all grade eights at Bruce Middle School who would prefer screen time as their activity of choice. So we're going to make a, a part to whole ratio because we're comparing a part to a total. We're going to make a part to whole ra ratio that compares um, grade eights who prefer screen time. And we'll compare that to total grade eights. Okay, so what we found the other day with the poll I had done with the one class the other day, that out of 20 students, eight of them chose that they would prefer to do screen time. Uh, playing video games, watching television, going on the computer, things like that. And what we're going to do now is we're going to use that ratio to make a prediction on the total population of grade eights at Bruce Middle School who would prefer to have screen time. So we'll make another ratio. Now the total of this ratio, we have to have the total of all grade eights at Bruce Middle School. This is the grade eights that were in one class on one day. The total number of grade eights of Bruce Middle School, if everyone showed up, there would be 107 of them. And what we want to do is figure out or make a prediction, which we'll call X, on how many of those grade eights would prefer screen time. Now, because we're asked to do an estimate here, I'm going to play with my numbers to make some easier numbers. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, you know what, I'm going to leave this ratio the same but I'm going to say 8 over 20 is approximately x over 100. I'm going to round off that 107 to 100. And what we have here is we have what are called equivalent ratios. Uh, there are two ratios that make the same comparison, but different amounts. We're going to use this ratio to make a prediction on the total population of grade 8s. Uh, so what we do is we recognize that I can do 20 times 5, to get 100. And since they're equivalent, I can do the same thing to the top. And I get that x is equal to 40. So out of the total population of grade eights of Bruce Middle School, we could estimate that about 40 students would want screen time. Now, that wouldn't be an exact answer. To get an exact answer, we'd have to actually poll every single kid. But this is one way we can use ratios. We can use ratios to make comparisons, but we can also use them to make predictions. The goal in this unit will be to do a, some problem solving with ratios and equivalent ratios, but we want to become familiar with some of the different aspects of equivalent ratios. That's what we're going to do right now. So I'm going to flip forward. And one of the things we want to look at is how to figure out if a set of ratios are equivalent or not. And by equivalent, I mean the same. So the way we can do that is we can write the ratios in lowest terms. So um, I have a pair of ratios here, 6 to 16 and 24 to 50. Um, they're not in lowest terms. So let's get them both in lowest terms and then compare them. Well, 6 to 16, we can divide both terms of that ratio by 2. And we get 3 to 8. 
And 24 to 50, we can divide both parts or both terms of that ratio by 2, and we get 12 to 25. Both of these ratios are in lowest terms, and as you can see, they're not the same ratio. They're actually pretty close, but they're not the same. Um, so we would say they are not equivalent. So that's how you can determine whether a set of ratios are equivalent or not. Um, if we look at another example, we have two three-term ratios. We have um, 4 to 12 to 4 and 16 to 48 to 16. Let's get them in lowest terms. Um, we could divide all three terms of this ratio by 4. And we would get 1 to 3 to 1. We could divide all three terms of this ratio by 16. And we would also get 1 to 3 to 1. Since in lowest terms, both ratios are exactly the same, we would say they are equivalent. Now, one thing you also might recognize here, I'm going to erase this, is that this ratio is actually four times the size of this ratio. So if I did this, four times four equals 16, 12 times four equals 48, and four times four equals 16. So the second ratio is four times the size of the first ratio, which means I should be able to mul multiply each term of this ratio by 4 to get each term of this ratio, and it's true. So we know these ratios are equivalent. Now we can use this idea to solve some ratio puzzles to find the missing value. So in each of these examples, um, we have equivalent ratios, and we know these ratios are equivalent because they have an equal sign separating them. If we have some missing terms in the ratios that we can use to uh, use equivalent ratios to determine that missing term. So what you have here is you have two equivalent ratios. We don't know the first term of the second ratio, but we do know the second term of each ratio. And I can see here that to go from 6 to 18, I times by 3. That means the second ratio is 3 times the size of the first ratio. So to go to the value of x, I would do 5 multiplied by 3, and that's going to give me 15. So we would say the value of x is 15. Same idea with three-term ratios. In this case, we actually have two missing values. We have an x value and we have a y value. But what I can see here is that I have the third term of each ratio that has a numerical value, and that's the one that's going to help me to, to determine the size of the ratio, the comparison of the sizes. So to go from 6 to 18, I multiply by 3, which means this second ratio is 3 times the size of the first. So let's use that idea of times 3. Well, that means to go from the second term 2 to the second term y, I would be times 3 which means y would be 6. And then, to go from the first term of the second ratio to the first term of the first ratio, I would actually do the opposite, right? Since the second ratio is 3 times the size of the first, if I'm going in the opposite direction, I can divide by 3. So 9 divided by 3 is 3, and that means the value of x is 3. So it's using the idea of equivalent ratios to find some missing terms. Let's look at a couple others here. Okay, I have two equivalent ratios. Now I know the first term in each ratio. To go from 12 to 3, I divide by 4. The second ratio in this one is actually smaller than the first one, right? 
the second ratio is actually four times as smaller than the first one. I'm dividing by four. 12 divided by four is three. So I would do the same thing to go from 20 to x. I would divide by four, and 20 divided by four is five. So x is equal to five. And the last one, number four, we've got another three term ratio. I wanna know the value of x and the value of y. Once again, I know the third term of each ratio. So to go from seven to 14, I can see that that is times two, which means every term in this ratio has gotta be double this one. This ratio is double this one. So to go from the second term of the first ratio of four to the second term of the second ratio y, it would be times two. So four times two is eight and y is equal to eight. Now, if we're gonna go backwards from the first term of the second ratio to the first term of the first ratio, since we're going backwards, we're gonna do the opposite of times by two, which is divide by two. And two divide by two gives a value of one. And remember, every term in this ratio should be double this one. 2 is double 1. 8 is double 4. 14 is double 7. So the value of x is 1. That's how you use equivalent ratios to find some missing values. Now, last thing. This question says write three equivalent ratios to the equal to the ratio of squares to circles to triangles. Okay, so we have three squares. We have two circles. And we have four triangles. So that ratio is three to two to four. Um, if I want to make equivalent ratios, all I need to do is multiply each term in that ratio by the same number. So I could decide I want to multiply each term by 2. So that would give me, give me an equivalent ratio of 6 to 4 to 8. I might decide I want to multiply each term in that ratio by 3. So that would give me the ratio of 9 to 6, to 12. I might decide I want to multiply each term in that ratio by 4. So that would give me the equivalent ratio of 12 to 8 to 16. Basically, I can multiply or divide each term in this ratio by the same number no matter what that number is, and I will always get equivalent ratios. I could go on and on and on forever. Equivalent ratios, the same ratio, just a different size. Um, that's a little introduction to equivalent ratios. The next step is to use this idea to do some problem solving. Um, hope that video helps. That's all for now. Flexing Teacher Weber, out.